<clears throat> I would say um, Jack's Wise. I write it on my notes every Sunday. Kids, make sure to release the kids. Jack made sure to stay up here to release the kids for me. Amen. <laughs> So, wise man right there. The rest of the deacons, I guess you better take some notes. You might want to stay up here just in case I forget. Well, it's good to see everybody this morning. Um, I want to start off uh, giving out a, a couple little, not really announcements, but uh, first off, I want to start off saying thank you, everybody that took some part in Tuesday night with our Haunting on Main, with our Candyland theme. I wanted to say thank you to everyone for this past Tuesday, big part, small part, whatever it is. It's all important, and it went well. Um, so it went well, and I wanted to say, say thank you to everyone that took part of it. Also, I want to remind you, don't forget about our shoe boxes. What's our goal, Jennifer? Over 100. She's not going to be specific over 100. Let's shoot for... Saturday at 10 o'clock downstairs. Gotcha. So Saturday, 10 a.m., we'll have Susan send out an email and get that. But um, just, just that packing party will be this Saturday. But don't forget, this week, um, get the boxes in. Um, net collection week begins on November 13th. So get those in. Let's see if we can't make a kid smile and a bring Jesus Christ and his glory to a family overseas somewhere. So... Good to see everybody. We'll be in John chapter 14 today as we continue in our series, our counselor, our study of the Holy Spirit. And I want to give you a quick review. In case you haven't been here, I want to give you a quick review of where we've been so far. In Acts chapter 1, we saw that the Holy Spirit, He has a mission. And this Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, is part of the, the Godhead, part of the Trinity of who we believe God is. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit, He has a mission. And His mission is the mission of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, He takes the spotlight and He shines it on Jesus Christ continually and constantly. And since the Holy Spirit, and since the Holy Spirit, that's His mission. And He's the most precious gift given to the church most precious gift given to sinners is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. The most precious gift given to the church is the Spirit that fills us, empowers us, and walks with us. God's presence with us every single day. And since that's our most precious gift, the Holy Spirit's mission should also be our mission. Everything we do must be to point the spotlight on Jesus Christ, to make much about Jesus Christ as we point others to Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit's job to point the spotlight on Jesus through us, and He does that by empowering us and equipping us to do so. In John chapter 7, we saw the Holy Spirit fills us to give us life. Listen, without the Holy Spirit, we are spiritually dead. We are spiritually separated from God. But with the Holy Spirit, we have life. We belong. We are a child of God with our names written in the Lamb's book of life. And then last time, in verses 15 through 18 here in John 14, we saw that the Spirit fills us to help us lovingly obey Christ. First and foremost, the Holy Spirit wants to turn our affections, turns our heart, turns our mind, turn our whole being upwards towards Jesus Christ. Loving and adoring Christ is first and foremost in our lives. And when our hearts are set on Jesus Christ, when our focus is on Him, then obeying just makes sense. Because when you see who Jesus Christ is, you can't help but obey. You can't help but do what you're supposed to do. And you do it with joy. Loving Christ with our whole being it is, comes before obeying Jesus Christ. You see, when we obey Jesus Christ because we have to, you know what that means? That means we come to church. We come to Sunday school because we have to. 
We sit in sanctuary because we have to. We be nice because we have to. And there's no joy in that. But there's pure joy in loving Jesus Christ. And when you love Him, you will want to obey Him. Because you see how good and awesome and glorious that He is. Our prayer so far that comes out of this series, and we're going to add to it again today, is this. Holy Spirit, fill me. Show me more of Jesus. Help me. Because I can't obey Christ on my own, so help me lovingly obey Jesus. Remind me every day of your life-giving water. Empower me. Use me. Why? To glorify God. To strengthen your church. And to point others to Jesus Christ. And this morning, I want to begin this morning, by again, like I did last week, starting off asking you a question. So is everybody ready? Let's see how many people we can get laughing at this or looking at somebody else doing this. Have you ever walked into a room of your house for some reason, and when you got in there, you ask yourself, why did I come in here in the first place? Hey, man, I got some hands going up today. You had something on your mind you had to do or get, but as soon as you walk in, you forget. Or how about this? Have you ever gone to the store? Knew what you needed. You get home and you go, Honey, I got to go back. I forgot to get that. The question I'm basically asking this morning is this. Are you a forgetful person? Can I get an amen that you are? Do you ever forget things at times? Do you have to be reminded about things? Or do you have to write yourself these little notes in your wall, your desk, like mine does some days? It looks like a bunch of sticky notes and there's no desk there. Or do you have to put things on your calendar so that little notification on your phone can go off so that you don't forget that you got a lunch meeting or something else? I have to do that like ten times a day. Do you ever have to be told over and over and over again to do something? Listen, it's a truth about who we are. It's part of living in a broken and sinful world. We are forgetful people that have to be told and reminded quite often. And please don't elbow your spouse or give that look to your teenagers and your kids and go, he's talking to you this morning. I've already seen a couple of you do that this morning, by the way. Thankfully, when there are things that I forget about God, His Word and His promises, thank God He is there to teach me and remind me, which is today's big idea right from the start. The Holy Spirit, He fills us to teach us His Word and His ways. The Holy Spirit fills us to remind us of the promises found in His Word, to remind us of His goodness and His faithfulness and His love towards us. We tend to easily wander. We tend to easily forget in the moment. We tend to allow our hearts and minds to get distracted from what matters most. Jesus Christ, His glory, His gospel, and His mission. So the Holy Spirit, He fills us to teach us, to remind us, and guide us every step of the way. Let's begin by looking at our text. It'll be up on the screens. It's in John 14, verses 24 and 20, I mean 25 and 26. It's only two verses. And I talked to you about John 13 through 16. It's the farewell discourse of Jesus before he is arrested and he goes to the cross. And he's told the disciples here he's going away. But they still don't just, they're like us. I, I love the disciples. They're just like us. They just don't get it. They're stubborn and hard-headed just like us some days. And so he tells them, don't worry. I'm going to send you another, a counselor, a helper, a comforter, an advocate, the Holy Spirit, and this one will always be with you. And now Jesus tells them this, beginning in verse 25. Would you please stand with me for the reading of God's Word this morning? Jesus says this in John 14, beginning in verse 25. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper... 
the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things. And He will bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Father God, thank you. Thank you for the day you have given us. Thank you for those that are here in the room and online today. Thank you that we're able to gather together to meet with, meet with you and hear from you this morning. Thank you for your word, which is the truth. Thank you for Jesus and his all-sufficient and atoning sacrifice. And thank you for your presence in our lives through the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit now and forever. And now we ask that you open our eyes and open our ears to see and hear what you have to say to us from your word today. Convict us and bring us back into your ways. And if there's someone listening today that does not know Jesus Christ, will you do the work that only you can do and save that soul today? Thank you again, and we love you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. <clears throat> Four points for you today, and I'm just going to go ahead and give somebody a heart attack today. This will be the shortest message you ever hear from me. Number one, the Holy Spirit will teach me. I love this. It means He will teach us and give us, you ready for this? God's knowledge, God's wisdom, God's instructions, God's perspectives, God's way. He's going to teach us and tell us what we need to do, know every single step of the way. Listen to me. Have you ever thought about this? we got the Holy Spirit that lives within. Those of us that are walking with Christ, that are followers of Christ, we have the Holy Spirit. Think about this for a second. All of God's wisdom, all of God's power, all of His knowledge, everything from God is available to us through the Holy Spirit. Listen, the Holy Spirit living in me and dwelling in me means that all the resources of God are available to me. Amen? Oh, man. Get your head around that one for a minute. All of His resources, all of His knowledge, all of His... Everything, 2 Peter 1, everything you ever need is available by God's grace. All the resources of God are available to me. It also means, and listen carefully to this, the Holy Spirit, He is our teacher. And as our teacher, this is really, really humbling. Teenagers, I've got one. Listen up. The Holy Spirit, as our teacher, it means that there are some things I just don't know and understand. Jesus is the master we are the servants. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. We are the students. And we must be taught. The Spirit as the teacher, it tells me, I don't know as much as I think I know. And I still have a lot to learn. Did you hear that? I don't care if you're been walking with Jesus Christ for a hundred years or you're just new to Jesus Christ today the spirit as a teacher tells me I don't know as much as I think I know that's pretty humbling isn't it and if I don't know as much as I think I know listen it means that I must be in a posture of humility and dependence on the Holy Spirit I should be listening and ready to learn from the Holy Spirit because I don't know as much as I pretend to know. That's why I need the Holy Spirit in my life. We can't do or know a thing without the Holy Spirit. But listen to me. We're people that are really good pretending, thinking that we know a lot more and can do a lot more than what we actually think we can. We're really good at pretending. I must be in a posture of humility because I don't know as much as I think I know. I must be in a posture of dependence. Only the Holy Spirit can teach me. In everything, 
He is the teacher. I am the student. Now listen, he's telling to this, this to these guys, these 11 guys that are still left. Remember, Judas has already dropped out. These 11 guys in his farewell discourse, his final words, and he's telling these disciples. And this is what he's telling them. Guys, you have a worldwide mission. You will do global discipleship as you build my church. There will be language barriers, travel barriers, and cultural barriers. Persecution? Oh yeah, they're going to hate you for my name. And by the way, your worldwide mission you got, there are 11 of you. Can you imagine the disciples as he's telling them all this? You want us to do what, Jesus? How are we going to do this? You're going away. You just told us a few verses. How are, you, how are we going to do this without you here, Jesus? We can't do it. Humility and dependence. Amen and amen. You can't do this on your own. And so Jesus says, yeah, I know. I know. I'm telling you. Global mission, persecution, all this stuff. I know you can't do it, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And with my presence and the resources of God within you, you'll be able to do anything. Amen and amen. The Holy Spirit, I'm going to send him, and he's going to teach you all these things. Listen, how many of y'all go out of here on Sunday morning? You sit down and you eat. You take a nap, and before you even go to bed tonight, you've forgotten what I preached on. <laughs> Amen, I got a couple back there being honest. That's the Jonas, we're going to work on them. <laughs> All these things for three and a half years, and you don't even know this much about me, guys. When I'm gone, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He's going to teach you all things. Amen and amen. The Holy Spirit will teach you. And what's He going to teach? All things. The Holy Spirit will teach us all things. And listen to me. I, I've had this debate and I've heard other people say it. When the Bible says all, what does the Bible mean? All! Can somebody define it in any other way? Paul says to Timothy, God desires all people to be saved. Not all are going to be saved. All means all. He's going to teach you everything you need to know, every step of the way to accomplish the mission of Jesus Christ. Everything you need, the Holy Spirit's going to teach you. Think of the past few years in this, this country. Pandemic. Yeah, He's going to teach you about everything you need to know. Race relations. Yep, that's included. Politics. Elections. Yep. People that disagree with you and hate you. How to deal with them. Yeah, the Holy Spirit's going to teach you that. How to love your spouse. How to raise your kids. How to handle your finances. Death or loss of a loved one. Miscarriage. Wayward child. You put it on the list. The Holy Spirit will teach you about it. The Holy Spirit will teach you all the things you will ever need to know, no matter what circumstance or what, where you find yourself, no matter what. Well, Holy Spirit, I'm going through this right now, and I don't know what to do. Will you teach me? What a humble and dependent prayer. Amen? And when we pray like that, and we ask the Spirit to teach us and give us the knowledge and the wisdom and the strength and the comfort and the courage that we need. You know what God's answer is? Yes. Yes. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me, you are teaching me, and you are reminding me every step of the way. Oh, and by the way, your presence is with me. I will fear no evil. And all of that is available only through the Holy Spirit.
So here's the question I got for you today. I'm not done, but here's the big question I got for you today. The Holy Spirit will teach me all things. Are you going through something this morning? Are you going through something where you need God's power, His wisdom, and His grace? Then get on your knees in a posture of humility and dependence and say, Holy Spirit, teach me. And when you say that, don't just tell Him to teach you. You need to be ready and willing to listen. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Number three, the Holy Spirit will remind me of God's promises. Anybody in here need just a few of those promises today in this world that's out of control? He takes all the promises of God from Genesis into Revelation and puts them front and center in my heart and in my mind where they're personal to me and whatever I go through. When Joshua su succeed Moses leading God's people, three times in Joshua 1, the Lord says to him, Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Be strong and courageous. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you, Joshua. To those in Philippi that are being persecuted and suffering, they have very little. But Paul reminds them in Philippians 4.19, My God will supply for all your needs according to His riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And in Philippians 13, when they're tired, they're weak, they're hated, they're worn out, they're persecuted, they're suffering, Paul reminds them in Philippians 4.13, You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Or have you blown it again? Have you fallen into some sin that you know better than? 1 John 1, 9, here's a promise. He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us when we confess our sin to Him. Or how about this? When life beats you up and you're down and out because of what the world, friends, and family put you through. Romans eight thirty one. If God is for us, who can be against us? What about this one? 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in thee. When I feel like I have no one that cares, when you feel like you have no one that cares about you, that you're all alone. 1 John 4, 19. We love God because he loved us first. What about this one? No one loves you or cares for you. Romans 5, 8. God demonstrates His love towards us that while we were still dead in our sins, Christ died for us. Or how about this? When all seems hope and lost, lost, hopeless and lost, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Philippians 1, 6. He who began a good work in you will complete it in the day of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Promise after promise comfort and encouragement. He is provider, comforter, my fortress, my refuge, my rock, my shield, my peace and light in the midst of the darkness and confusion. He is our strength when we are weak. Jesus Christ is my all in all. Wherever I am, whatever I am going through, the Holy Spirit is there to remind me of God's truth about who He is and what He's done. The Holy Spirit is there to remind me of God's promises at just the right moment when I need Him the most. The Holy Spirit, He teaches me everything I will ever need to know. He reminds me about God's grace and goodness. He reminds me of His Word. He reminds me of His promises. And listen, number four, the Holy Spirit... Not only does He teach and guide me, teach and remind me, He will guide me into His truth and His ways. Every step of the way. Listen to me closely. This is a bold statement, but I'm going to say it. The gift of the Holy Spirit would be completely pointless if all the Holy Spirit did was fill our head with knowledge, facts, and information about God. Did you hear what I said? If it was all about information and facts and intellectual knowledge, 
the Holy Spirit would be completely pointless. And I'm not going to spend too much time here because next week as I close up this series, I'm going to be speaking quite a bit on this subject. But I do want to say a couple things here. The Holy Spirit doesn't want us to just know about God's truth. The Holy Spirit doesn't want us to know just about Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit wants us to know God personally. And He wants to take the truth that He gives us and He wants to use that truth and apply it to our lives so that we can live a life worthy of the Gospel, a life worthy of Jesus Christ. And so, the Holy Spirit, He teaches us and He reminds us of those things of God and He guides our every step, guides us into His truth and His ways. So that He can give us new hearts. So that He can renew our minds and transform our lives more and more into the image of Christ so we can live as living sacrifices, the one that gave himself up for us. Amen. He's going to lead and guide and transform us every step of the way. And that transformation aspect is where I'm going to close out next week. The Holy Spirit fills us to teach us, remind us, and guide us every step of the way. And listen... When we surrender to and come to and follow Jesus Christ, this is who we get. The Holy Spirit. He gives us purpose because the mission of the Holy Spirit, it becomes our mission to point the spotlight on Jesus. And it's only because of the Holy Spirit that we can ever know God and make Him known. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us life. And it's only because of the Holy Spirit that we can love and obey God. And it's the Holy Spirit that teaches us everything we'll ever need to know. He reminds us of the Word, of His promises, and it's the one that guides us. His presence is with us every step of the way. And so He wants to guide us every step of the way. So when I tend to wander over here, so I don't drive off a cliff, the Holy Spirit convicts me and reminds me It's called the discipline of God. Thank God for His discipline. Thank God that He holds me accountable. Thank God He gives me brothers and sisters in here to keep me on track. Because without the Holy Spirit and without you, I don't know where I'd be today. We have full access to all the resources of God because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So as I close up, I ask you a question I've already asked today, a big question today. What are you going through this morning? As the musicians come, what are you going through today? And what do you need God's guidance and His wisdom? What promises of God does the Holy Spirit need to remind you of in your situation today? Are you in a posture of humility and dependence before the Holy Spirit? Are you ready to listen and learn what God has to say to us today? Or, here's the big question. Are you in need of the Holy Spirit today because you're not following Jesus Christ and you don't have the Holy Spirit within? What is the need this morning? All of the resources of God are available to you through the Holy Spirit today. What is the need? And here's our prayer. This is my closing prayer as we get ready to sing. Holy Spirit, fill me. Show me more of Jesus Help me lovingly obey Jesus when I can't do it on my own. Teach me your ways. Remind me of your truth. Remind me of your life-giving water. Guide me, empower me, use me to glorify God, to glorify you, to strengthen your church, and to point others to Jesus Christ. What a precious gift the Holy Spirit is. What's your need this morning? Will you come?
hymn of invitation is I can hear where he leads me, I will follow. Please stand.